The youngest of six children, Jose Amaya Guadrado, was born in the small country of El Salvador. Jose's mother, Lucia, moved her family to the United States when he was a child. To protect her family, Lucia fled El Salvador in the summer of 2015 to escape the violence there. Sadly, violence occurs everywhere, and it found Jose, Lucia's youngest son, in Florida during the summer of 2015. People who knew Jose described him as a shy and quiet child, yet he was hardworking and family-oriented. To help support his family, Jose started working at a local ice cream shop on the weekends. Since Jose had aspirations of working with cars, his mother enrolled him in Homestead Job Corps in Homestead, Florida, when he was 17 years old. Homestead Job Corps was a federally funded education institution that worked with at-risk youth between the ages of 16 and 24. Many children from underprivileged backgrounds went to this school, and although they had some general education, they mostly learned about a particular trade. As part of the program, Homestead Job Corps provided housing so students could learn how to live independently. The school assigned each student a staff monitor who acted as a house parent and offered guidance throughout their time there. Founded in the early 1960s, the Homestead Job Corps made the news once before the 2016 incident with Jose. Police arrested five students after they were found inside an abandoned warehouse that was allegedly a gang hangout in 2006. Officers found bullet casings and blood at the warehouse, which led them to believe the gang beat people there. Several months before June 2016, Jose moved into the dorms at Homestead Job Corps. While Jose's parents allowed him to attend Homestead Job Corps, they were unaware they accepted children with criminal records. They would have reconsidered sending Jose there if they had known that. He might still be alive today if the school had told his mother and father that information. Jose asked his mom on June 28, 2015 for permission to leave the school and buy a snack at a nearby store. As she said yes, she did not know it would be her last chance to speak with her youngest son. He would be dead in just a few hours. After Jose did not return to campus, Homestead Job Corps called Jose's parents at 6 p.m. Jose's family immediately called the police and reported him missing. However, officers told the family that they could not help them and that they had to return in 72 hours if Jose had not returned home by then. Jose's family wasn't about to wait three days to look for him and began looking immediately. Day and night, they combed Miami-Dade County and the area around Homestead Job Corps. Although Jose's family searched for him tirelessly, they found no sign of him. On July 1st, 2015, Jose Amaya's elder brother, Ferretti's Amaya, discovered something horrifying in the woods behind Homestead Job Corps. Ferretti's noticed what he thought was a freshly dug grave covered with burnt wood. With his hands, he dug through the upturned dirt until he found a human foot. As soon as he saw the foot buried in the ground, Ferretti's recognized his younger brother Jose's socks. He knew he had come across the body of his brother. As devastated as Ferretti's was, he was happy to find his brother's body because it meant Jose was no longer alone. Jose's family was shocked and confused. Why would anyone want to murder their beloved Jose? He had no enemies and had never done anything wrong. The family wanted justice for him. According to Ferretti's, what happened to his brother was unfair and the person who killed him needed to be behind bars. Police arrived at the scene around midnight and the following day, the medical examiner confirmed the body belonged to Jose Amaya Guadrado. The medical examiner determined that Jose died from trauma. According to investigators, Jose's body was found near a popular spot where students hang out. In the past, police have responded to altercations in the area where students had been caught doing drugs. After Jose's death, his cousin created a GoFundMe page to help cover his funeral expenses. She said funerals are expensive, especially if they are unexpected. 
funerals and cremations in Florida can cost over $7,000. His family did not have that kind of money. Jose's cousin had set a fundraising goal of $5,000, but they ended up making $7,000. A month after Jose Amaya Guadrado was murdered, police in Pasco, Florida, made their first arrest. Within two days, two more suspects were arrested in Miami-Dade County. The three arrested suspects were all charged with second-degree murder. Among the three men arrested for the murder of Jose were 19-year-old Christian Collin, 18-year-old Jonathan Lucas, and 20-year-old Kareem Arbello. The three suspects confessed to the murder of Jose and implicated 18-year-old Desiree Strickland in the crime shortly after their arrest. Police arrested Desiree Strickland on August 19, 2015. As it turns out, all four suspects were Homestead Job Corps students, and Kareem was Jose's roommate. The three males in the group were described as bullies at school and allegedly killed Jose over a debt that he owed them. It took two weeks for Kareem, the ringleader, and three other suspects to plan Jose's murder. Days before the assault, they dug Jose's grave and concealed the machete Kareem would use to kill him. On June 28, 2015, the group lured Jose into the woods behind Homestead Job Corps while Kareem waited, hiding behind the trees. When Christian, Jonathan, and Desiree had Jose where they wanted him, Kareem attacked him with a machete repeatedly. While Kareem brutally attacked their classmate, Christian Collin, Jonathan Lucas, and Desiree Strickland stood and watched. Initially, Desiree was angry because Kareem attacked Jose while she was urinating behind a tree. Missing the start of the murder made her angry. After severely injuring Jose, Kareem attempted to force the dying boy into the grave he had dug. Jose wasn't ready to give up and tried one last time to fight Kareem. Unfortunately, Jose was too weak from the blood loss to take on Kareem. Because he tried to fight back, Kareem beat Jose's face until it caved in with the machete. Then Kareem pushed Jose into the grave. When the medical examiner autopsied Jose's body, they found dirt in his airway, meaning he was still alive, struggling to breathe when Kareem buried him. Christian, Jonathan, Desiree, and Kareem used Jose's clothes to clean blood from a nearby fence after burying him. Afterward, they set a fire and burned their blood-stained clothes and Jose's belongings. The murder weapon was then disposed of. After cleaning up, Christian and Jonathan returned to Homestead Job Corps, but Kareem and Desiree stayed behind. They had a sexual interaction next to Jose's grave. When Desiree was arrested, she screamed for her father the entire time. She wailed and told the officers that she didn't kill Jose and didn't do anything wrong. Despite being informed that the other three suspects had confessed and implicated her, Desiree did nothing but scream for her father. Officers informed Desiree that she was under arrest and would not be able to see her father. They told her she could discuss her involvement in the crime with them. Unwilling to cooperate, Desiree remained combative. According to reports, she headbutted and hit the officers interrogating her. Desiree stated that she wasn't trying to punch the officer, but was opening the door. When Desiree wouldn't calm down, officers threatened to hold her inside the patrol car until he completed his paperwork. She told the officer that he couldn't do that to her because she had asthma and sitting in the hot car would kill her. The officer told Desiree she wasn't going to die. The officer told Desiree she could wait in the hot car or stay in the air-conditioned interrogation room. After Desiree calmed down a bit, the officer left her alone. While the officer was out of the room, Desiree was caught on video trying to escape, trying to remove the handcuffs from around her wrists. She removed screws from the electrical socket. However, she was unable to remove them. Desiree instead scribbled, Miami Police Department go to hell on the table with a screw. During Desiree's first court appearance, her character completely changed. As the judge announced the charge of second-degree murder against her, she appeared relaxed and calm. Due to Desiree's behavior during her interview, 
She was also charged with resisting an officer with violence, battery of an officer, and criminal mischief. A grand jury indicted Desiree on charges of first-degree murder, which then left her eligible for the death penalty. Kareem appeared in court on August 25, 2015, and pleaded not guilty. Because he did not speak, the attorneys entered his plea on his behalf. At Kareem's sentencing, his grandmother expressed shock and disbelief at the act her grandson committed against Jose. After his mother was murdered when Kareem was a little boy, he was raised by his grandmother. That is one of the reasons Kareem's actions shocked his grandmother. She couldn't understand why Kareem would violently harm another family's loved one when he lost his mother in such a brutal manner. There are no words, she said, as she expressed grief for Jose's family and her own. Jose's murder was not Kareem's first crime. He had a criminal record as a juvenile. In addition to bringing a weapon to school, Kareem was charged with several petty theft offenses. Kareem was charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and tampering with evidence concerning the murder of Jose. Christian Collin appeared in court at the end of August. During the hearing, it was evident that Christian was not in a good mental state. Wearing a suicide prevention vest, he was shaking and rocking. After Christian's attorneys attempted to have him ruled mentally incompetent, two doctors were appointed to the court to examine him. According to his attorney, Christian slept only three hours a night. He was kept awake by voices in his head. In their opinion, Christian was experiencing a psychotic episode due to his drug abuse. The judge ruled Christian mentally fit to stand trial, even though he told an invisible person to shut up in his examination by the doctors. On August 28th, Jonathan Lucas appeared in court, and on September 3rd, a fifth arrest was made in connection with Jose's murder. U.S. Marshals arrested 23-year-old Joseph Cabrilla in St. Louis, Missouri. On September 16th, all five suspects were charged with first-degree murder, and if convicted, they faced the death penalty. Due to the possibility of an impartial jury, the court was closed to the public. The publicity surrounding Jose's murder would make finding a juror who had not heard about it virtually impossible. The plea deal would have given Joseph a prison sentence of 10 years, and he would have only been charged with conspiracy to commit murder. However, he refused to plead guilty. Because Joseph was not present when the murder happened, his attorneys said he would not take a plea deal. An amendment to Florida's sentencing law was adopted in March 2017. This amendment requires a jury to unanimously agree on a death sentence before the judge can sentence someone to death. Prosecutors waived the death penalty for four of the five suspects due to the law change in their ages. In the case of Kareem Arbello, suspected of instigating the murder, the death penalty remains a possibility. Christian, Jonathan, Desiree, and Joseph were still threatened with life in prison, even though death wasn't an option. Homestead Job Corps closed permanently after Jose's murder. In 2020, Joseph Cabrera and Jonathan Lucas pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. Jonathan was sentenced to five years in prison and 15 years of supervised release. Allegedly, Joseph was given a lighter sentence. Desiree Strickland pleaded guilty in 2022 in exchange for a 15-year prison sentence to avoid a potential life sentence. Both Kareem Abrello and Christian Collin await trial. Kareem has yet to reach a plea deal with prosecutors despite confessing to murdering Jose on video. What do you think about the murder of Jose Amaya Guardrado? How do you feel that most of the defendants have taken plea deals? Do you think Kareem should receive the death sentence? Don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe.